Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you had a great Christmas. Looking forward now to the new year. And that got me thinking about some things that I've been wanting to do this past year in 2023, but never gotten around to. And one of those things is using the spare PC that I have that my dad actually gave me before he passed away and putting it on as like the Xbox or the PlayStation for the TV. So when people come over, we can play all sorts of games. And I have another computer and I would like to convert that into the gaming media or the gaming station for for the TV. But right now I'm running a Linux uh, OS on that and I want to change it back to Windows. As much as Linux is great and a lot of people love that OS, I'm more accustomed to Windows, so I'm gonna get that converted over. That's the first step. And then hopefully maybe I can actually get like a micro ATX case for my micro ATX motherboard. But soon to do that. The system will have a Gigabyte B450M Wi-Fi motherboard, a Ryzen 7 3600X CPU, an RTX 2060, 32 gigabytes of RAM, and one terabyte of solid state storage. So right now I'm getting the Windows 11 installation onto my SD card so that I can boot it up through the Linux system and that we can get things going. Right now at 50% progress, so Glad that works. I wasn't sure if an SD card would work, even though it could be a bootable media, but they said USB drive, so I wasn't sure if that is what was required. I think last time I used uh, SD card as well, but I don't remember if I ran into any issues. I guess we'll find out now as we wait. I began the installation to the SD card and it only took about five minutes. So I plugged in the SD card once it was done to the system running Linux and then proceeded to struggle for about a half a lifetime to find out which was the correct media to boot from. Turns out they were identical. Everything seemed to be going great. And then of course, I get a message that says Windows 11 could not be run on your system. So I was back to square one. So I started the Windows 10 installation and while it was doing its whole downloading and, and installing, I went for a quick coffee break. Let's just say that I was rushing beyond all understanding when making this coffee. And it was disgusting as you can possibly imagine, but my philosophy is just drink the dang coffee. You know what, I thought I could do it, but I can't. This is the first thing I'm drinking in the morning. I'm like sweating. Doesn't taste that great, as you saw from the actual footage. Ugh. All right, the installation was complete. Now we're ready to go. But before we can get our hopes up, there was another issue. Formatting. So I did what any normal person would do. Get on the Google and did some quick research on how to get this figured out. Once I did that, I was able to go through the command prompt and get my storage device formatted to the proper NTFS format. So once that was all figured out, I was able to get Windows 10 downloaded and installed onto the new system, and now we were ready to move on. So basically what I'm gonna do is be taking the old computer here and transferring everything into this case, and then putting everything in this case into this computer. I already did this once, vice versa, because I wanted to make it kind of like a sleeper build, but I do like the look of the black case better, kind of more stealthy and kind of hidden. So literally just taking all the components, just flipping into the other case. I first started taking out all the components out of the black PC case. Also, I did change my mind on buying a new micro ATX case since the prices were pretty high and I had other future plans for making my own case. Once that was done, I began to take everything out of the old case to get it ready for its new home. I started by removing all connections to the motherboard itself to make sure nothing would be remaining attached. Now, admittedly, this is the worst of any of my computers I've ever looked, considering that there's absolutely no cable management going on in there. Once the six pin connector to the GPU was removed, I was able to remove the GPU entirely from the case. Next, I took out the motherboard from the case and all that was left with me was my power supply. Four screws and we're done, easy peasy. I use isopropyl alcohol to get any residue off from the previous thermal paste. 
I then reapply new thermal paste onto the CPU. So the old silver PC case was my dad's. He passed away a couple years ago and he loved building computers and making them do whatever it is that he needed them to do for his fun and outlandish projects. Before he passed away, he wanted to build a computer with me as he saw my interest had grown. He started building the computer but never got to finish it before he passed away. I have plans to make that case into an amazing computer one day and to finish what we started. That case isn't going anywhere soon. Building computers is always a great and fun time, and if you have been wanting to build a computer yourself but are hesitant to do so, don't be. There's so many great resources out there, and it's so much fun, and it is so much easier than ever before. So give it a go. If you guys like this video, be sure to like it, and if you want to see more content like this, be sure to subscribe. Give me some suggestions down in the comments. I'm sure you guys saw tons of things in this video that I probably did wrong, or like, you should have done that, or this, and... Hey, give me all the suggestions possible. I love it. Can't wait to see you guys in the next one. Peace.